How about that for a close-up view? Get that in your cameras and see if after the film is developed it actually comes out. An airplane that is not supposed to fly. Faceted panels on the side deflecting the radar away from the enemy scope. The F-117 stealth. The project designer spoke to us many years ago in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and he said, I know, I know you guys. Skytypers break to the landing. First one breaks, they count one, one thousand, two, one thousand, and the second one breaks, and it goes on and on and on. And now they have spaced themselves out in that particular formula. Hit on the runway, the forward visibility is blind. What you do is look out the left and right side, keep an equal amount of concrete between you and the grass. Equal amount on the left, equal amount on the right. I must be on the center line, I must be okay. test range outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. The workers were shoveled up on their own private airline each and every day out of their own private terminal. And the project manager of this top secret aircraft told us that never once was security breached in the years of development of this aircraft. It was only brought out under the darkness of night and flown out of the remote desert areas where, but you can't pinpoint the aircraft is because of the shape of the panels. If it wasn't for the stealth material and the faceted panels that deflect the radar beams away from the enemy's scope, thus making the today. From out of the fertile mines of Lockheed, there's only one shape like it. It is the F-117 Stealth. This airplane flew only 3% of the coalition missions in Operation Desert Storm, but because of the accuracy of its later laser-guided bombs, it accounted for 40% of the devastation. I talked to the lead pilots who went out on the first missions in Operation Desert Storm. They said going into Iraqi airspace over the major cities, over Baghdad, it looked like a thousand Fourth of July fireworks demonstrations in America. <laughs> in order to keep the F-117 functional, during the design and during its flight, it borrows components from aircraft that would be out in the field. And the high rotation of the engine is reduced down to a slow rotation of the prop by a reduction gearbox that's geared to 13.54 to 1. So in cruise, that prop is going only about 1,000 RPM from the engine by changing the pitch of the propeller. Turbo props are traditionally low in noise footprint and very, very economical on fuel burn. Now the aircraft is not extremely fast because it has a high lift or a fat weight, but in a lot of cases speed is not important, especially if you're using one of these aircraft as an airborne refueler for helicopters.